Okay, we're going to call the workshop to order at 6.05. Please call the roll. Here. Dr. Early. Here. Mr. Williams here. Mr. Roscoe? Here. Mrs. Rayford? Here. Mrs. Richardson? Okay, next, if we could stand for a pledge. I'm here too, just so you know. You forgot somebody. You forgot somebody. I'm here too. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Mrs. Groom. <laughs> You're still here. She was about to leave, though, because you didn't call her. Right. right. I apologize. I'm about to be a mutiny in here. <laughs> To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we need a motion for approval of the agenda. I make a motion that we approve the agenda as presented. Support. Please call a vote. That was early. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Rayford? Yes. Ms. Richardson? Yes. And Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Next we have hearing at the public. We'll open that up at, I keep saying the wrong time. It's, I'll say 607. Anyone wish to be heard? Anyone wish to be heard? Seeing none. Hearing public is closed. Business operations. You guys can take over. I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Robert Carlesso, Executive Director of uh, Business and Operations, to the floor to review the um, amended budget. A final budget and then uh, next year's original budget. I'm on it. It's up there. Wait, the clicker? There's no clicker. There's no clicker. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, next slide, please. So tonight, as Christina said, we're going to first talk about the 23 amended budget. Can you speak into the microphone? Please? I could. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, first the 2023 amended budget. Um, we had a budget last year at this time, which was the 2023 original budget. So, um, that was based on a number of assumptions uh, at that time. There are best estimates at that time. And now this is uh, updates it for like our known activities that we have throughout the year. So if you advance one slide, please. So this is uh, the general fund. Uh, the district has several funds in which it operates from. The main fund is called the general fund. So this would contain like the operations of our school buildings, um, our grants are reflected in here, our, you know, from both the state and federal, and uh, uh, our spending that from money that we get from our various revenue sources like Macomb County, uh, special education millage, and the enhancement millage. So there are revenue sources up there. Um, Local revenue would be like property taxes. State, we have you know our state per pupil funding amount, uh, at risk GSRP and other state grants. Federal are like our Title One, Title Two, IDEA ESSER grants. Um, Macomb County Enhancement Millage was passed a few years ago that generates about one point one million dollars in revenue. The MISD, that's a special education millage. We got about three hundred. $400,000 from that. Uh, we have a transfer coming from the Food Service Fund where the general funds provide services to the Food Service Fund, such as like payroll, HR, just like administrative processing that we do for them. So we're allowed to charge them for that. And then uh, during the year, uh, last summer, we sold some assets out of our warehouse and some of our old 
buses, and we got about forty thousand dollars in revenue from that. So, this reflects our actual per pupil number of pupils, um, which was two thousand two hundred and two, and the original budget we estimated two thousand one seventy nine. And when I did the original budget, I estimated 9,050 per pupil. We ended up getting 9,150 per pupil. So I was a little bit conservative, and that's why well, you'll see we have a little bit of a surplus coming the end of the year. Next slide, please. So these are district expenses. Um, so they're kind of broken down. As you also see there, we got 2022 actuals, and then the big the original budget from last June, and now in green is the amended budget. The top section, they call those instructional type services that we uh, perform for our students and our community. Next is support services, community services, facilities, capital outlay. Uh, we spent $5 million there, or we're participating, and that's all from ESSER funding. Oh, shoot, that's probably me. Robert, it's time to go to the board. <laughs> and then uh, I want you to focus right at the bottom there, uh, where it has our fund balances, a percentage of total expenses. It's 25.89%. Um, if, if those of you have been on the board for a while, this is a really strong fund balance. Uh, just to put it in perspective, we need to keep about 11 or 12% in fund equity in order to avoid borrowing. So we have a healthy cushion there before we need to borrow again. Um, and at today's interest rates, like at roughly 5%, it, we could be spending a couple hundred thousand dollars on interest if we had to borrow. So that's a good thing. Um, we have an operating surplus for the year, $500,000, meaning our, the, our sources of revenue are greater than our expenditures. Uh, like one thing that's kind of unusual here is that our even though our fund balance number are, is increasing, our fund balance as a percent of operating expenses has decreased slightly. That's because we have so much grant funding. The, the calculation for that is you take your fund equity divided by your total expenses, and right now we have like $8 million more of grants available this year than last year. So that diluted the operating expenses, which caused our fund balance percentage to go down a little bit. Um, MSBO recommends a 15% fund balance. The fund balance that, that puts you on the state's warning list is 5%, uh, like their early indicator for financial hardship. So we're, we're in a good spot right now. Next slide is the school service fund. This is comprised of food service and the student activity accounts. Um, student activity accounts um, are money that are, ra are raised for a specific purpose that, you know, in our buildings. Like they do a fundraiser to buy, buy some type of equipment for the cheer team. They, they raise money for it, or they sell something, they put in this account and they spend right from it. So it's money raised for a specific purpose. And, and that will generally always equal zero, or pretty much always equal zero. Because what you're spending is what you're, or receiving is what you're spending there. The other component to this is the food service fund. Um, you know, we have, uh, this is the first year in a while that we have kids coming back every day. So we're expecting to turn a profit this year of about $150,000. Uh, and that's primarily just due to serving lunches, you know, every day to kids. Whereas, and the food prices have moderated at least somewhat from last year. Next slide, this is our debt service fund. So uh, one of the millages that you'll be asked to approve later this evening is uh, for voter approved debt. And we are allowed to levy the amount that we need to pay our principal and interest that are for the coming year that are gonna be due. So for instance, this year we have principal interest totaling a little bit over $2 million. We went out and levied a rough, roughly $2 million. Uh, so that the revenue is the tax levy, two million oh twenty-seven, and then expenditures are principal and interest charges of two million twelve. We have a, just a slight uh, surplus there, so we have an ending fund balance of a million two oh one. So you know, if our bond passes in August, we'll, we will continue to levy 
3.5 mills uh, because there's a zero increase tax levy. And that would be for 36.4 million. So hopefully you'll see a little bit larger numbers there next year at this time. Capital projects fund. So this is money that um, is left over. If you remember a couple years ago, we had um, a performance contract with Siemens where we borrowed money and uh, roughly $2.4 million to make improvements to our lighting, like LED lighting and certain energy improvements. Well, we got some rebates you know, from DTE and consumers um, where they rebated part of the purchase price to us, and we have that money left over. So that's what that money is right there, uh, sitting in fund balance of $37,000. So there's no reason to spend it this year uh, or, or even next year. It's there for when we need it. So next slide, please. Sinking fund. So we levy uh, three mills, so we're, well, voters approve three mills for sinking fund, and we use this for various capital improvements and repairs throughout the district. So this year we spent money on uh, the front entrance canopies that you see in front of our elementaries and early learning center. We also spent money on those marquee signs. So that all came from the sinking fund. So we levy, you know, we get roughly $1.6 million a year from that levy, and that money carries over from year to year. So if we don't spend it all this year, it's available for future year projects. Okay. So, at, you know, we're going to spend, two, even though we levied $1.6 million this year, we're going to spend about $2 million. So we spent more than we brought in, but we, we had an opening balance of $1.6 million to start the year. And we're going to end the year with about $1.2 million. So this would go into any future projects, no specific timetable. So. Any questions on the 2023 amended budget? I, I have a question, but I don't know if it's the right question. Um, our fund balance is 25%, but is there a possibility that it will be reduced based on the grant funding or funding that we received, that we won't receive again? No, but if, if the only way it would go re, it'd be reduced if we, like say, had certain programs that were funded by a grant, and uh, we chose to fund those from the general fund instead of with grant funds. Okay. Um, Robert. Go ahead. Good question. How far are we out in years in terms of the, of the sinking fund as well as all the funding? We're in our third year sinking fund. Yeah. You'll see that there's the dates on that. The, the last slide on here is um, the dates for our, our, our um, operating mills, our, our debt, and our sinking fund. Thank you. Yep. Twenty twenty four original budget. So, since this is the original budget of the year, and the state has not yet determined their budget, we don't know exactly what we'll be receiving as far as like our, our foundation allowance. That's the the per pupil amount we get from the state. So I had to make some assumptions. Um, I assumed like the number of pupils would decrease by 40 uh, to, to 2,162, and that's really a, a hundred student decrease from our spring count this year. So from spring to next fall, I anticipate we drop a hundred pupils. Foundation allowance, I used um, 9,550, which is an increase of $400 over last year. There's rumors, oh, excuse me, there's rumors that that might be a little bit higher again. Um, we'll see. You know. Um, it should be in the ballpark, you know, whatever we get. Um, I also assume, know that our grant funding will be about the same as this year because we have a lot of money left in ESSER, which I just kind of carried over. Next slide. You'll see the federal line there. Um, just kind of carried that over to, to this year. Thank you. And then uh, those are other revenue sources that we got. Same sources as this year. The next slide is the expense side. Um, so if you focus all the way down to the bottom here, I'm expecting a break-even budget. And um, I, I, into the expense number, I, you know, I factored continued spending on grants. I figured in um, the raise for employees that you'll be hearing about a little bit later this evening. 
So we think that, you know, that we can sustain a positive uh, surplus or an operating surplus, you know, into the foreseeable future, as long as there's no, nothing, you know, surprises from the state or anything like that. If things hold or increase, I think we'll, we're okay for a while as a, financially as a district. So, um, so our fund balance, because there's no surplus, it's going to stay the same at 11.7 million. The percentage, um, it's roughly the same as the amended. And then all, our, as I said before, all our grant funding is reflected here includes the 5% end of year bonus uh, that's going to be used with Esther 3 funds for our staff. So that, that was the general fund. The next fund is the food services fund. And the student activities fund. And we're expecting um, you know, similar results uh, to this year, you know, we have a surplus of about $150,000. That's pretty much it on this fund. There's nothing else really to, to report. Debt service. So this, again, is we're, we're levying the amount of money that's required to retire our debt, principal and interest payments this year. Um, so we'll have... We're, Anticipating a surplus of about 162,000, and then our ending fund balance of 1.3 million. So, if our new bond passes, this money is just used to, in part, retire the new debt that comes on board. Next slide, please. Capital projects fund. Um, this is again just to remind the money that was left over from the rebates on. Uh, um, performance contract from the utilities. We're not anticipating needing this money this year, so that's why we have zero revenue, zero expenditures, and that 36000 it will just be sitting out there until we need it. Cap, oh, next one, please. Sinking fund. So again, we're levying uh, roughly $1.7 million this year. Uh, this is to be used for our capital improvements and repairs in our district. Uh, we don't know the exact projects yet that are going to happen this year, so I just used a placeholder for $1.7 million for expenses so that our budgeted revenue will equal expense, and we still anticipate having fund equity of $1.2 million at the end of the year. So most likely this money will be used for, uh, you know, in part for uh, like next year's round of uh, classroom of um, what you call casework, so, you know, like all the shelving and cabinetry doors and that type of stuff, along with ESSER funds. Next slide. This is the tax rate request form. Um, Macomb County requires that we fill this out, and the board will need to approve this form individually uh, during the meeting, and we'll need uh, two officers there to, to sign this. If you look at the first horizontal row there where it says operating, OPR, and H means non-homestead. So that's like all the businesses that are in our community and non-residential properties like pro commercial properties like apartments and that type of thing. So statute, the statute says we can levy 18 mills, but our rate has been reduced over time because of the Headley Amendment, which caps the amount of a tax increase every year or the amount that a person a property holder would pay so it limits it to the great the lesser of five percent or the rate of inflation so if our property values increase let's say ten percent we're only allowed to like increase it five percent and the way they do that is they they cap cap the increase and they lower your tax rate down and once they lower your tax rate to make that smoothing effect, it can never go back up again. So that's why, you know, 20 years ago it was 18 mils. And then when we re renewed a couple years ago, it dropped to 17.76. And then since then, our property values have gone up higher than that 3% or rate of inflation. So now we're down to the second from right column over there, 16.89%. 
The way around that is like uh, you can, the board at some point in time could go to the voters and ask them to approve a Headley override, which allows us to levy the full 18 mills. So if we ever get to that point, you know, you know um, that would generate in today's dollars about $350,000 more of revenue each year by levying the full 18 mills. The next row is debt. Um, you know, we're levying currently 3.5 mills, and you know, and that's what we need to retire this debt. And if the bond were to pass in August, we would continue to levy 3.5 mills. The next row is the sinking fund millage. So the voters originally approved three mills, but it's been reduced due to the Headley Amendment over the last two years. So now we're driving 2.8 million, I'm sorry, 2.8 mills instead of the full three mills. Any questions on our tax rates? Going back to the 18, mm -hmm. Is that where we split that nine one year and nine in another year? Is that, is that, uh, is that you the know, right fund that I'm speaking of? I, as, as long as I've been in schools, we have been, had a summer levy. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some districts, they split theirs between a, a, a fall and a winter, and we just or a that. summer and a winter tax. Here in East Point we, in Warren, we do it all in the summertime. That gives us our money up front during the year. Uh, if we had it spread out like in, in summer in a winter pain, we'd probably have to borrow money to, to make ends meet during the year. So this gives us some money up front that we can plan it. So we just front load it? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I have a general one about the food service on there. We have to go back to the slide. Just, uh, just a little bit further explanation on that. When That basically has to be zeroed out at the end of the year for the most part, and you start back over fresh. No, I mean, it used to be, didn't you used to be able to roll over like 50000 or something like that three, into your general fund? Three months of expenses. So the district had like, was actually exceeding that. So they, that's when they did all those, I, th I think it was like six, eight, seven years ago when I came back to the district, we had these kitchen renovations done where they put the ventilation in, the big fans in the kitchen to, to help with ventilation. That was that project. So we spent down the fund balance at that time. But I'm just saying we're only allowed to carry so much in yep. there. We can't carry right three months enormous amounts limit. of money. So we usually end up having to spend it yep. by the end of the year. Yep. Because if not, you turn it back over, right? Uh, you they force you to spend it on something. If, if yeah, I mean you got to spend it on you, something because yep. you can't roll it into the general right. fund. So what we're doing as a district, we're charging the indirect costs, which is the the general fund services that we provide to the food service fund. So that captures part of that surplus. And then at some point, you know, if that build, balance builds, then we'd have to spend it on some equipment or something like that for the kitchen. Yeah, but I just wanted to point that out because it's not easy sometimes on these things to say, well, we have way more in revenues and expenses in this particular area. Can't we just roll that on over into there? Because you can't necessarily do that. Food service has to be used for food service. Right, right. You can't and even if you it. have an abundance right. left over at the end. You can't just roll that into your general fund. And that's correct. Pay teacher salaries. And yeah, it can right. only be used for correct. services, and that's the way these funds work. Is that that's correct? That fund has to be used for that. That's it. Yep. Okay. Good. Any questions on the 2024 original budget? Okay. All right. Thank you. I think that's it. So we're adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Carlasso. Thank you so well, much. Workshop is adjourned. You guys got about three minutes if you need to take a quick break, get a drink. Or...
Those go. How did they receive them? Mr. Grunberg? Here. Dr. Early? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Roscoe? Here. Mrs. Rayford? Here. Mrs. Richardson? Present. And Mrs. Grunberg? Here. If we could all stand for a pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay, next, is there a motion for approval of the agenda? Place forth a motion to approve the agenda as written. Support? Support. Please call the vote. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Uh, Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Rayford? No. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Motion carries next. Is there a motion for a consent agenda? I make a motion that we accept the agenda as presented. Support. Question? Yes. Um, regarding C for the, the new hires. Um, support, student support services, is that the person who's going to be in charge of special needs program? Yes, the um, director of student support services will oversee the operations of um, special education. Okay. My question regarding that is, if she's not or was never certified of Are you asking that this item be separated from the rest of the consent agenda? Oh, that's fine. Because we, we can do that. Well, I'll just thought we And then vote right on there. it separately. And then, and then you can discuss that item. Okay, fine. I mean, that's kind of how consent agenda works, right? If you want to discuss that item separately, you, all you have to do is one person can request. And we'll vote on it separately, and then you can ask all the questions you want on it. Okay, then I'll ask if that one be separated out. Okay, sure. C. Okay. Okay, is there a motion to accept uh, A and B? Consent okay, agenda items A and B. C1. C1. Oh, it's C1. I'm sorry. Is there a motion? 
motion. Do you want to amend your motion? Amend, uh, let's amend the motion. I can amend, amend the motion? motion? Yeah, okay. I can amend the motion to accept the consent agenda with A, B, and C, 1, and remove C, 2. Right, we'll address that separately. Oh, so it's C2 that we're removing. Okay, yep. Support. Okay, please call the vote on that. Uh, Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Okay, motion carries. And then now on to number two. I'm just, well, I'm, I'd like to take a moment, please, and acknowledge um, Russell Ball is in the audience with us this evening. Um, Russell is who you have just um, hired officially to be okay. the athletics and activities director. Um, Russell okay. has completed a one year with us here in East Point Community Schools, and in that time, um, stepped up in his leadership of physical education at East Point Middle School, um, stepped up and took on some coaching roles for us, and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say that Russell Ball blew away the field um, in the interview process um, and was far and away the best candidate for this opportunity. So thank you for allowing me the privilege of introducing uh, Mr. Russell Ball this evening. So now you so now you have the second approval, which will be the Director of Student Support Services. Okay, is there, um, is there a motion to approve? Place forth a motion to approve, approve the uh, Director of Student Support. For support? Support. Okay, now is there any questions, discussion on that? Yes, there is. Um, again, my question was, if a, t if a person is not certified to teach special ed, how do we justify them being placed as a director over those who do? Right, so um, there are certain titles within the MDE ranks that require certain certifications. The Director of Student Support Services title oversees the entire body of the work. Lori, would you like to jump in and add more? Sure. Included in um, student support services is more than special education. It's also the supervision of our process for Section 504. Um, that office supervises the work of all the medical um, situations with students, making sure that they have medical plans. Um, we support the social emotional needs of students with our at risk social workers and our special ed social workers. So there's a lot more than just special education in that department. However, um, this, this um, candidate that the team has chosen has worked in our office for a full year, and we have done extensive training, um, like hundreds of hours of training together to make sure that um, she has a really solid foundation. There's also a really rich support structure through MISD um, and through the district to support um, things that come up, and things come up all the time. There have been things this year that I've had to call for support on. Um, and as long as she has a, a real strong knowledge of who to go to to help support those questions that she will have. Thank you, Lori. <coughs> I'll for you some information later. Thank you. I'm just saying there is no legal requirement that they have to be a certified special education teacher in order to there is not. hold that there position. Is not. There is not. No, I got that. Okay. Well, I, I, I wanted to make sure I got that. Okay. Is that okay? It sure is. Okay. Please call the vote. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? No. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. 6-1 motion carries. Superintendent's report, Superintendent Gibson. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, joining us here in person and also online. Um, school one day the computer will connect there we are 
Um, school let out, but there was still a lot to continue to celebrate. Uh, we'd like to highlight East Point Middle School. And Mr. Ball perhaps can help us with, is that Miss Thrift in the dunk tank? Uh, yes. Yep. So East Point Middle School had a fantastic field day. Uh, children were inside, outside, uh, and everywhere playing different games and sports. Thank you so much to East Point Middle School and all the staff. Uh, it was a busy week that last week of school because we also had field day at Crescentwood Elementary School. We wanted to, again, highlight, I've never seen so many inflatables in the district um, as we traveled around. Um, just really great things the last week of school. Field days, uh, we had the athletic banquet for the middle school. Mr. Ball was a huge part of helping to make sure that that event um, went off without a hitch and students and their families came and it was so awesome to see how many families came to support their young athletes um, Then we had the high school athletic banquet and that is of course the bowling team um, Doing their final cheer as they closed us out So thank you so much to all of our students and families who participate in those end-of-the-year events um, this year at uh, East Point High School, we really capitalized on using the auditorium. And we hosted kindergarten recognition night. Uh, that's the picture up there in the top left. A uh, big thank you to the staff at East Point High School for helping Forest Park facilitate this. Um, there was no parking anywhere in the parking lot because our families had filled the parking lot and filled the auditorium. We also had um, Pleasant View's fifth grade recognition at the high school. And then in the upper right-hand corner, you can see Bellevue's fifth grade recognition. And again, another packed house. Um, congratulations to our students transitioning on to middle school, those transitioning on to first grade. Um, it's been a love, it was a lovely week of celebrations for all of you. Um, yesterday on Sunday, four of our East Point scholars left for Camp Skyline in Almont. Uh, the Grants Department began funding camperships last year in 2022, sending four students off to summer camp. Um, camp Skyline is located in Almont, Michigan, um, and the students are off for a week of overnight summer camp fun. Um, and the scholarships included backpacks for students, supplies. We also transported the students up to Camp Skyline um, so that they could be up there for the week. And they will get picked up on Friday. Uh, very excited to hear all of the great stories that these students have from their first time away at summer camp. I think our families struggled the most. Uh, cell phones are not allowed at the summer camp. And so uh, the kids all had to check in their phones before they left um, for camp. And so we hope that they're dealing with that omission of technology well. And trust and know that Skyline will take care of them. I'd like to highlight for the Board of Education as well as for the community the access to bond information that you have. Our website was actually featured in an article of what to do celebrating our bond work. So congratulations to communications and marketing um, specialist Caitlin Keenitz for her hard work. So when you navigate to East Point Community Schools webpage, up at the top you'll see the bond election information tab. Um, there is a survey for sharing thoughts and feedback with the district. We check it weekly on Mondays. We also have all of the facts and background information on the bond proposal. Um, absentee ballots will be sending home here this week. Um, the official election will be on August 8th. Um, there are downloads of flyers, information on precinct maps, helpful links for more information, as well as all of the factual information about projects and if you are curious to know exactly what will be happening at your campus you can navigate to the school um, click on the drop down button and read exactly the improvements that are slated to be um, conducted at your building so i wanted to highlight um, and again celebrate caitlin keenitz for her exceptional work on all of the bond election information we also have a um, frequently asked questions 
where we're taking the survey questions that people fill out and then we're providing more information <coughs> here um, so that the community can learn more about the bond and more about the work. Um, we also have, again, more information here on the facts page. And then finally, um, it is Lori Rush's last board meeting here with East Point Community Schools. Um, Lori began her career here eight and a half years ago um, and walked into a myriad of uh, special education state complaints, um, helped to resolve all of those as well as develop manuals, processes, procedures. Um, so our department is in an amazing shape. Um, we did not recognize Lori for a retirement uh, because she rescinded her retirement and instead will be going to work with the Macomb ISD where I have already made part-time <laughs> and where it has already been made known to all that uh, we would get continued support here uh, at East Point Community Schools through our partnership with the Macomb Intermediate School District. Um, but I'd like to take this opportunity to humbly thank Lori Rush for her service here. Upcoming events, uh, this week we have a Gleaners food distribution, 9.30 a.m. at East Point Middle School. July 10th begins the K-8 summer program. Um, and then the Boys and Girls Club will be hosting the Detroit Pistons basketball camp uh, July 10 through 13. I believe the finish is drying on the floor from the gym floor uh, being refinished last week. Uh, but Boys and Girls Club did kick off and start, and they are full and currently have a waiting list for students to enroll. So congratulations to Boys and Girls Club, and we're excited about the partnership. Um, and that concludes the superintendent's report for this evening. Okay, next is the hearing on the public. We'll open that up at 648. Does anyone wish to be heard? Does anyone wish to be heard? Seeing none, hearing of the public is closed at 648. Is there a motion to go into executive closed session for collective bargaining strategy? Thanks for the motion to go into a closed session for um, what is it? collective bargaining. Collective bargaining bargaining strategy. Support. Please call the vote. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Dr. Early. Yes. Mr. Grunberg. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. And Mrs. Grumberg? Yes.
Okay, we're back in open session at 7.55. Next item, discussion action, human resources. Yes, good evening. Um, I'll turn it over to Stephanie Fleming, Assistant Superintendent. Okay, good evening. Um, tonight we are um, requesting the appointment of Lisa Petrella to move to the Director of Curriculum and Instruction Services. Um, she is currently at the coordinator position. We did responsibility charting as a cabinet in April. Um, and with the amount of um, curriculum that we're onboarding and the oversight of instructional coaches and our um, K-12 librarians, um, this position came to fruition. Um, so we would like to appoint her um, tonight for that, for that position. Is there a motion to approve? Place forth a motion to appoint Lisa Petrella to Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Support. Support. Early. Early, early beach. Oh. Okay, Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. And Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. I don't think we need any discussion on the next item. I would move we approve the EFE salary compression scale and contract extension as presented. Board. Support. That many. Take your pick. There was about four. Of them. <laughs> Mary got it. Mary, Mary. got it. Mary got it. Mary got it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Mary. Yes. Who was second? Mary. Grunberg. Oh, Mr. Grunberg. Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Uh, Ms., uh, Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. And Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Next we have business and operations. 2023 amended budget. Is there a motion to approve the amended budget as presented? Pay forth a motion to approve the 2023 amended budget. Support. Hasn't been any changes since our meeting started like an hour ago or so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just, you just it is still the same, still, still is the same information, right? The index is Okay, please call the vote. Okay, Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Dr. Early? Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Grumberg. Mrs. Grumberg? Yes. Mr. Grumberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? Yes. I notice both of these have the end year. That's normally what we call that's them. A, that's a yeah. I, just, uh, I thought we used to, for some reason I used to see all the time, I thought 23, 24, 24, 25. I just noticed that. Is there a motion to approve the 2024 original budget? Motion to approve the original uh, budget, uh, 2024 original budget. Support. Please call the vote. Mr. Rasko? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Uh, yes, with a contingency. Mrs. Richardson. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the property tax levy that we were presented with earlier? Motion to approve the uh, property tax levy. Support. Any questions or discussion? Please call the vote. Uh, Mr. Roscoe. Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Ms. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Mrs. Rayford? I, I hear you. I'm trying to make up my mind. 
I'm, I'm, I have some concerns. Yeah, hesitant, yes. Okay, next we have recommendation. Wait, 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 wait. Miss Richardson. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we worked to the end. I'm sorry, that's my fault. Mr. Mrs. Grunberg. Yes. How are they going to get you? Okay, next we have a recommendation for purchase district telephone system. Danny going to give us some information there? Yeah. Answer questions or who's going to handle that? Yeah, Robert. Uh, good evening again. Um, Robert? Yes, our technology coordinator, uh, Danny Latham, uh, is requesting the purchase of a new uh, telephone system. The one that we currently have in place was installed in 2011. And it's beyond its useful life. It's difficult to get parts for the system. It's uh, no longer being surfaced, serviced. So um, Dan explored like different options, and uh, he decided on this system through all covered uh, that will meet our needs uh, into the future for at least like the next seven to ten years. And the cost of this system uh, through consortium pricing is going to be three hundred eighty-four thousand nine hundred seventy-three dollars. And we'll pay for it with SR3 funding. So it's all grant funded. Is there a motion to approve? With a question. Okay. Was that the question? Sure, go ahead. Okay. All right, we can put a motion. Make the motion first. Okay. Make the motion. Okay. 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 Make a motion to recommend the purchase of the district telephone system. But I had a question. Support. You got to Okay, go ahead. Hey, you're chomping at the bit. Go ahead, take that first bite at the apple. Because if I don't, I'm going to forget it. <laughs> I'm going to forget the question. <laughs> Sorry about that. Are there any additional parts that would come with the package and warranties and, and uh, updates and things like that? Mr. Lee, ah, would you move to the microphone? Thanks. Are there additional parts? Will you please wait till you have your microphone on, Mr. Lee? There are lots of additional parts that are all included in the price of this. Um, this is basically going to return, uh, replace every phone in the district. It's going to improve our faxing ability. Uh, instead of going through devices that convert it from digital to analog, it's going to be straight analog right off of the uh, controllers. It's going to allow us some additional features when it comes to uh, emergency response, the ability to record inbound calls if there's a, uh, a threat or something of that nature. It can be captured for uh, evidentiary uh, evidence for the police. Um, the, the existing system has served us well, but we've reached the point now where there, I mean, I can't, I can't get replacement phones for it. Um, it's considered end of life by the vendor, so they don't support it anymore. Um, but we're definitely going in the right direction. Is this something that we'll have to do every seven years? About? About every seven to ten years is the life expectancy oh, on a phone system. Seven years yeah. Just like you get computers, you get three to five years out of them. Right. Phone systems are the same way. The technology changes so fast, um, and, and things be, you know, just become better. Like when, you know, one solution was going to a cloud-based solution, but that's just a lot more expensive, and it puts us in a position where if we ever lose connectivity, we can't make 911 calls, which just isn't acceptable. So when you say digital to analog, you're keeping the analog because of the 911 capabilities and no, the emergency the, capabilities. For for faxing, it, it's for faxing. It changes it from a network signal into a uh, basically converts it down to a you know it's called a uh, your twist and pair your your pots line. So right. you've got two wires. Um, with this phone system, you, we don't have to go through that converter. It'll be just direct copper off of the phone system. Um, but the, it's all VoIP, though, right? The yeah, the phone calls are all VoIP. The faxes will be analog, over twisted pair. Okay. It's also a, a security. It, it, it improves security when it's a solid set of copper going from the controller to the device, uh, versus going over a network. Okay. I have a question. Um, the um, I know that it's replacing the phones, but will they have to do replacement of wires? Like, will they, they have to go into the walls or anything like that? Because I know sometimes when you do see these replacements, they're not cross compatible. So, for in this type of situation, yes, the existing wiring, existing network jacks, everything will all be reused. Um, okay. We won't have to go into any walls. 
except for there are a few locations that currently do not have phones that we're going to install phones into, like into the Shamrock Cafe. The only phone in there is in the office. I want one inside the cafe or the kitchen area in case there's an emergency, they can get a hold of somebody quickly. So is there like some type of contingency for putting something at a wall and you find something when you go in there? I'm sorry, I didn't. If you know when you open up a wall, you got to put that jack in there. But if you oh, we're not. Go wall, yeah, we're not going to open up yeah, the wall. No. We're going to run conduit. Uh, oh, okay. Conduit. Yeah, oh, right, no, wire outside. mold, wire okay. mold down the wall. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Cause you open up a wall, you ain't nothing. You know. Yep. Off of <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like a box of chocolate. You don't know what you're going to get. You know what you're going to get. Yeah, but okay, I understand. Yep. The other benefit is, is we can tie this in with our building PA systems mm -hmm. so that it can be a page from anywhere, not from specifically the office. So in an emergency, that definitely is a benefit. Any others? Mm -hmm. Ready to call a vote over there? Okay, um, that was Mr. Roscoe. Yes. And Dr. Early. Yes. Yes. Mr. Grunberg. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Rayford. Yes. Mrs. Richardson. Yes. And Mrs. Grunberg. Yes. Thank you. Okay, next we have a recommendation for a vendor, 2023 electrical work. Yes, um, it's part of the, the upgrade of our electrical systems at our elementary and early learning center. Um, the, the panels on those uh, electrical boxes need to be upgraded to be consistent with the current, current code. So in order to do that, uh, we put the project out to bid and the low cost bidder was Ainsworth Electric Inc. at a cost of 416890 In addition to that, we're recommending a 10% contingency be added to uh, the amount that the board approves in the event that once they start their work, uh, they discover something that uh, they have to do that wasn't in their scope. And that gives us a little bit of a cushion there so that the work can keep moving rather than being stalled and waiting for the following board meeting to to get the change order approved. So we anticipate this work is going to be done uh, in the fall uh, after school hours and, we're, and they'll do that work there and they'll clean up and then uh, you know get things in order for the for the next day and then continue in the nights and weekends without any disruption to uh, instructional services of the district. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support? Support. Um, Questions? Question. Question. Will it be replacing boxes? It's the wiring inside the boxes. Just the wiring inside the boxes. Yes. But there will be no necessary it, reason This is the box of chocolates that you just yeah. Just to know what you're going to get, right? Is <laughs> that during, during the, um, some routine uh, work during construction, it was discovered that there was some um, wires run incorrectly that need to be fixed? Oh, okay. Well, will 10% be enough? Well, we don't we know for so. sure because we don't really know, these don't know what's up how long these wires run. So they, yeah. they gave us a price based on so many feet of, of wire, oh. placement wire, and it could be less or it could be more. But this in itself contains a, an allowance uh, for, the, for that. Okay. But it, is the wiring in one geographical area, or you have to go into another wall, into a side of another building, or? We have, they have to trace the wires to see how far the problem okay. goes. Okay. Yeah. So it could it could be widespread or could it could be. just be limited to a couple classrooms. Anything else? Please call the vote. Uh, Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mrs. Roscoe? I mean, Mr. Roscoe? Yes. <laughs> and this is Richardson. I apologize. Yeah. Next, we have the 2023-24 Board of Education <laughs> meeting schedule. Is there a motion to accept the schedule as presented? So moved. Support. 
Please call the vote. Mrs. Rayford? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? I mean, Mrs. Grunberg? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mrs. Richardson? C2, is there a motion to go into closed session? I'll make a motion that we go into closed session. Support. Please call the vote. Um, Mr. Williams, yes. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Grunberg? Yes. Dr. Early? Yes. Mrs. Rayford? Um, I'm going to say no because I don't like moving at the moment and coming back. Well, we're going to stay here. Oh. <laughs> we're planning on staying here. I, was like, I can't do it. Okay. <laughs> so is that a yes or no? I guess it's a yes. If I don't have to <laughs> okay, Mrs. Richardson and Mrs. Grunberg. Yes. So at this time, we'll excuse um, all of the individuals not necessary for the hearing. Ms. Thompson, you are a representative from the high school. You will stay. Um, you are allowed to leave and uh, be in the hallway. Uh, we'll be closing the doors to go into executive closed session, and then we will reopen the doors after the closed session. You guys are all excused. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Lori. Bye-bye. Um, Caitlin, we'll you will stop the recording. Danny, <laughs> would you grab those doors, please, and thank you.